Right. Uh, so the Pizirga will be, according to the Afghan government, announced the Pizirga will be take place on the 29th of the May, if I'm not wrong. So what about if those people participated in the Pizirga advise or tell to President Karzai to go in peace, make a peace with the Taliban, and at least accept their 50% of their conditions, right? I mean, will you still support the Peace Jirga or President Karzai? Well, I think, I mean, it's always dangerous to get involved in hypothetical questions, you know, what if, what if. I think the key conditions that President Karzai set out, that the entire political leadership of Afghanistan has made clear, respect for the Constitution, renounce violence and terrorism. Those two key conditions seem to me, but more importantly the international community as a whole, to be right. Um, I believe that the peace jirga will create a consensus behind those conditions across all of the people of Afghanistan, all of the ethnic groups uh, of Afghanistan, and make that offer to the disaffected compatriots, to the insurgents, to rejoin the political and economic mainstream. On that basis, I think there is the prospect of a peace settlement. If those conditions were not met, then we know actually it's not about the international community's view. We know that there couldn't be peace within Afghanistan because the other people of Afghanistan not involved in the insurgency, women's groups, um, other ethnic groups, people who, minorities who would fear for their safety, wouldn't accept it. So those two key conditions are, are, are important because only on that basis can there be a, a genuine and sustainable peace. Right. So... What about if those Taliban say, okay, we respect the constitution, we obey the constitution, but one of the main condition is to international troops in Afghanistan leave Afghanistan and we make a peace. What's your command about this? Well, international troops are in Afghanistan to bring security. The, the NATO forces here, the, the title of the NATO forces here is the International Security Assistance Force. Our job here is to assist the government of Afghanistan in bringing security. And we don't um, have any ambition to be in Afghanistan for any longer than is necessary. So once Afghanistan is at peace, once we've helped Afghanistan's government build up the institutions of the state, build up their security forces so they can deal with threats from outside Afghanistan or from within Afghanistan themselves, our mission is complete. And once our mission is complete, our troops can go home. Well, we don't know. That depends on the conditions. Of course, if there's a peace settlement, um, then it will happen sooner and it will be possible for certainly international troops who are currently in combat roles to, uh, to, to, to withdraw from those roles. I would expect, because this is normal as you're building Afghan uh, security forces, I would expect us to have a job supporting the training and development of the Afghan security forces for some years to come, because uh, they still need that support. Uh, but I would hope that we would have troops out of combat roles sooner rather than later. Uh, so what do you think... Taliban is an independent movement or supporting or encouraging by any intelligence service or Pakistan or whatsoever? I think it's important. We use the, we use the label Taliban, but of course we all know, and Afghans know much better than a, than a foreigner ever can, that this is a complex uh, issue, the insurgency. There are lots of uh, different groups, uh, even, at, even at the top level, there are different groups operating in different parts of the country. And of course, as we look at the insurgency down at the grassroots level, if we look at Helmand or Kandahar or Paktika or wherever it might be, probably three quarters of the insurgents are local um, young men fighting within a few miles of their own villages and their own families. And they've drifted into the insurgency because of local disputes, local tensions, being excluded from um, local politics or from local uh, economic issues. Perhaps there's a power broker uh, in an area who um, has used the police or used a tribal militia against someone else and that's led to an outbreak of violence and people becoming insurgents. This is a very complex phenomenon across the country. And actually what we have to try and do, part of a political solution, is not just talks with the Taliban or talks with the, 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 the Quetta Shura. A large part of the political settlement is working down in the districts in the south and the east and ensuring that everybody there, including those who are outside the system, have a fair share of Afghanistan's political and economic power. And that will resolve a lot of this tension as well. So a political settlement happens at every level, village, district, province, um, and national. And, and I believe if we, if we resolve those issues down the grassroots, we'll deal with a lot of the problems that 
um, that drive people into the arms of the insurgencies. Mm -hmm. You said about uh, good governance in Afghanistan. Tell me more about uh, good governance in Afghanistan. Do we have a good governance? Well, I think everybody recognizes there are big challenges in governance. President Karzai, um, to his great credit, has been out holding shuras around the country. Uh, I've been with him, General McChrystal's been with him at, uh, at some of those shuras, particularly in the south. He was in Marja, he's been in Kandahar, um, he's, uh, he, he went to Kunduz in the north. Quite recently we were with him and he's, he's done others as well. And at all of those shuras, what he's heard from the people, the, the, the people of Afghanistan, is the demand for decent governance. And, and what they want particularly is uh, a stronger and more effective police force, and they want a fair and, uh, and quick and effective justice system. Of course, as well as that, they want economic development, they want roads built, they want schools and open and clinics open, but they do really focus on these basic functions of government that relate to security and justice. Um, and he's, he's heard that as he's gone around the country. We've, we've all heard it too. The international community are changing our priorities to uh, reflect the needs of the people as, as, they've, as they've expressed them through those uh, through those shuras, and President Karzai has committed uh, during his second term that that's a priority for him as well. Uh, what about corruption? Uh, most of Western countries are talking about the corruption inside the government, and yeah. I don't know what, what's your comments. So, corruption is critically important. Uh, it really is, it's, and it's not really corruption is not really in the end an issue between Afghanistan and Western countries. Corruption is an issue between the government of Afghanistan and the people of Afghanistan. The people of Afghanistan are the ones who suffer in the end. It is also one of your responsibility to mention to Afghan government to reduce the level of the corruption in your... Well, I think everybody has a responsibility to tackle uh, corruption, and of course the Afghan government must take uh, the lead in doing so. Where, uh, in my view, it is uh, critically important and really urgent is where corruption, again particularly in the unstable areas of the country, is really a symptom of the abuse of power and where certain local warlords, sometimes tribal leaders, sometimes power brokers, are using their local political influence not only um, to benefit from corruption but actually uh, are abusing their power and their influence and using the institutions of the state against the people or at least some of the people, other tribes for example, rather than them serving the people. And I think that is the critical issue, and corruption is a symptom of that, but it's not the only, it's not the only issue that we have to address. Well, apparently some Western countries, uh, Britain and the United States, gave six-month ultimatum to Afghan governments to reduce the level of corruption in Afghanistan. Otherwise, they won't help Afghanistan anymore after six months. Have you seen any sign of reducing corruption in Afghan governance? Well, well, the first point is there haven't been any ultimatums from the British government, the American government, or anyone else. There has been a very clear um, uh, requirement by all of the international donors that corruption is tackled and tackled seriously. But Mr. Obama, President Obama, he mentioned in his speech he will see, uh, he will closely watch Afghan governments to how tackle with the corruption. What, what, what about this? No, that, that's absolutely right. I'm not suggesting there isn't a strong commitment to tackling corruption, but, it, but, but you did ask whether there had been an ultimatum, and there hasn't been an ultimatum. But uh, the Afghan government in President Karzai's inauguration speech at the London conference in January uh, committed firmly to tackle corruption. And what we're expecting to see at the Kabul conference, which will be in July now, we believe, um, is a clear program uh, that's going to tackle corruption very effectively. And we would like to see some progress having been made already. Now, there are some signs of progress. In the finance ministry, for example, Minister Zakawal has really started to try and crack down on corruption within the ministry and within the customs area and increase the revenues of the government. The same is true in, uh, in some of the other uh, ministries as well. But we need to see a proper programme across government to tackle corruption, and I hope we'll see that as one of the outcomes of the Kabul conference. Um, I'm confident that the Afghan government is determined to achieve that, and, and let's, see, let's see what comes out of the Kabul conference. I think so, yes.